We're talking about a ripple tank. It is an apparatus which is used in the laboratory to study the properties of waves. So talking about properties of waves. What are the properties of wave? There are actually five main properties. We start with reflection. Then we start, then we go to refraction and then diffraction. And then we have interference. And then finally we have um, polarization. So I'm writing polarization in a different color. The reason is only transverse waves can undergo polarizations, right? The longitudinal waves cannot undergo, sorry, polarization. Only for transverse waves. And when it comes to interference, under that there are three categories now. Due to interference, we see these uh, features. Now, for example, we can think of, uh, okay. Interference, I mean, it's because of superposition, huh? principle of superposition of waves. Okay, interference, right, fine. So we come across beats, standing waves, and all those things. Constructs interference, destructive interference, all those things, right? Fine. Anyways, uh, these are the five properties of wave, but waves, but polarization is a property which is seen only in transverse waves. On the other hand, these are the properties which can be observed, which can be observed in ripple tank. We cannot observe polarization in ripple tank because in ripple tank, we study these properties based on the behavior of water waves. So here there's a shallow tank. Now this is a shallow tank, okay? You know what a shallow tank is? When I say shallow tank, it's not that deep. All right, shallow tank. And here you can see they are vibrators. This, this is a vib these are vibrators. So you, they, we have vibrators in different shapes. So these are actually vibrators. Vibrators. And this is a light source. And at the bottom, we have a screen. Um, it's not a screen, it's the ground, but to observe clearly, we use normally, normally we use a, use a white screen. Okay, right. So when the waves are produced here in the tank, due to this light source, the reflection of those waves will be observed in this white screen. Based on that, we will come to conclusions. Okay, so when it comes to vibrators, there are point vibrators, or bar vibrators like this. So depending on the uh, requirement, we will be using those vibrators, point bar vibrators. All right, so if you use point vibrators, you will be getting circular waves. You can get waves like this. On the other hand, if you use bar vibrators, you will be getting parallel wave fronts like this. All right, fine. And in addition to that, um, what else can we explain? Yeah, for the time being, that's that's it. And you can observe these four properties in ripple tank. Okay, right. Now another thing. Um, yeah, okay. Let's continue to the next parts. Fine. So let's go to the question now. It is required to obtain water for a depth of one centimeter in the ripple tank. So in this shallow tank, we want the depth of water to be one centimeter. What measure will you take to ensure that the water level is uniform throughout the tank? Okay. Now imagine a situation like this. If you have a water tank like this, if you have a water tank like this, The water tank is flat like this. I mean, the bottom part of the water tank 
then when you take water water will be like this everywhere water will be at the same depth you will have water everywhere the same depth but by any chance if the bottom of the if the bottom of the tank is not flat then there's a problem if you have uh, what do you call that the bottom of the tank like this when you add water remember the water level will be horizontal on top like this but at the bottom you can see water will be will be at different depths so and one more thing i forgot to mention the material of the bottom of the water tank in the ripple tank or the shallow tank this bottom part will be glass made of glass why is that because we want uh, the the projection of those waves we want to see the reflection of those waves on this screen that's the important thing okay we want to see the reflection of those waves here if it is not a transparent material then we won't be able to see the waves at the bottom so we make sure that the bottom part is transparent all right and uh, so to answer this question we have to ensure that the bottom of the tank is level with the horizontal level with the horizontal so you can see these legs you can see these legs so if you have seen them at laboratory their height can be changed people all right there are screws you can fix those legs to the tank so the height of the legs are adjustable all right so you, the answer for this you can say like this um there are heights of the legs are adjusted such that the bottom of the tank bottom of bottom of the tank is parallel to the horizontal parallel to the horizontal uh, with the aid of a spirit level you all know what a spirit level is correct so you place the spirit level here so let's draw a random diagram okay let's say we have placed the spirit level like this and we all know the spirit level there is a part there we have a a mark like this and an air bubble stuck so so if the air bubble exactly at the center like this that means spirit level is flat i mean parallel to the horizontal so if the air bubble is exactly at the center we can ensure that the bottom of the ripple tank or, or else the bottom of the tank is parallel to the horizontal okay so that's what we have to do that's the only thing we we can do to maintain the depth of water level at the same height all right because if the bottom part of the tank is not parallel to the horizontal different at different places depth will be different all right and then next question why is a wire mesh attached to the edges of the tank by edges what they mean is boundaries so these are the boundaries all right so when you turn on the vibrator a vibrator will start vibrating and the waves will be produced so if those waves reflect off these boundaries then there will be two types of waves the waves produced from the vibrators as well as the waves reflecting off these surfaces and that would cause a lot of disturbances in the tank so that we will not be able to observe the wave patterns clearly all right so the purpose of using wire meshes if not they make the edges we don't now here what i have drawn is incorrect we don't maintain the boundaries like this not like this the boundaries are like this then 
the waves can reflect instead of that we make boundaries like this the slope so that uh, waves cannot reflect off this surface okay so in oh, if not they will be using wire meshes which will uh, prevent the reflection of waves of the boundary all right so you can say for this answer answering to prevent the reflection of waves of the boundary boundaries to avoid disturbance disturbance in the tank then only you will be able to observe everything clearly all right fine all right so next question now no matter what happens here we will not be able to get conclusions from that because it's not quite observable so what we actually observe is the reflection we get at the bottom all right so nothing here these are legs between the tank and the white screen there is a you know empty space nothing so this is a tank where the bottom is glass all right so when you put turn on the vibrator waves will be produced we know these are water waves and water waves are transverse waves so let's see what actually happens there all right fine so to explain that let me illustrate that with some diagrams so imagine from top that uh, light rays are produced like this okay light rays are produced like this so you can see we'll get light rays like this and you have two types of surfaces one is convex surface the other one is concave surface as you all can see convex and concave surfaces so i'll draw some way some light rays very soon bear with me for a little so these are the light rays which are generated from the top i mean these rays are coming from the light source i think this would be right let's complete it patiently right so when you draw it's better if you can draw them all parallel all right they must be parallel parallel light rays okay fine so i have drawn them arbitrarily like this now what happens you arrange certain lines properly because according to my requirement right okay now you can see there are two types of surfaces here this part now this part this is a convex surface correct this is a convex surface whereas we have a trough here that is going to be a concave surface we all have learned about convex lens concave lens now these light rays are traveling from air this is air air to what is this water from rare medium to denser medium so it's like light traveling from air to glass something like that so this is like a convex lens this is like a concave lens compare like that will you all right so if you continue these rays you will be able to understand I mean, you will be able to notice now the this ray this ray it it actually goes through the optical center therefore it will go straight down it will not change its path it will not change its path it will go straight down straight like this so you can draw it perfectly in your diagram in your books similarly all the rays which come through the optic center they will go without refracting straight like this down similarly here also same thing will happen so these are the light rays from the light source okay 
so they are parallel and then when the when they reach the surface when the wave is produced they will be going through a convex and a concave convex and concave surfaces all right so you can see here i have uh, already plotted them right so you can see right so this is the rays coming from the light source the rays light rays which go through the optical center the broken line in black they have given they will not refract even in a lens lessons you must have studied so when you have a lens like this if you send a ray through the optic center it will not refract same thing is happening here all right it will not refract it will go straight but if you send rays like this it will refract like this it will converge these rays will converge on the other hand if it is a concave surface if it is a concave surface what will happen the rays will diverge but still the rays which go through the optic center will not show any change in their paths all right so just uh, revising what we learnt in under lenses right so this is what happens so exact same thing it's going to happen here as well all right so the rays which are at the convex surface what will they do they will all converge to that point like this to the focal point all right so here from here also even from here they will no this from this surface they will diverge now from the concave surface so this this is what happens from the concave part okay from the convex part they will converge from the concave part they will diverge so most of the rays will reach x regions and at y region the rays reaching y regions will be very very less all right fine so same thing will happen here right here converging converging here diverging now diverging here diverging diverging and again converging it keeps converging here also converging now diverging diverging and diverging here so it goes on like that i hope you get the idea here except for that center one others will refract so refract sorry so there are two alternate regions x y x y x y so x will be bright now they are saying in the question when a light source is placed above the tank bright and dark regions are formed on the white paper kept below the tank identify the bright and dark regions so most of the rays reach x so x will be bright region because most of the rays are reaching x and y will be a relatively a darker region okay because very limited number of rays will reach y okay and x will be actually representing the crest of wave whereas uh, y will be representing the trough of wave okay so on the white paper now on the white paper or white screen on the white screen this is what you will see you will see bright lines like this and then you will see dark region in the middle bright lines like this and then dark region in the middle this is how you will see if the wave is produced by uh, if the wave fronts are parallel all right and so you can see here if i explain this part now these are bright lines bright lines or bright spots so that actually represents crest and these regions in the middle they will be relatively darker so dark and those regions represent trough 
All right, fine. So the reason, whatever we explained here, we can uh, write down here. So what can we say? Due to convex and uh, concave surfaces created by wave by the wave light will refract and the converge and diverge to form bright and dark spots. Okay. If not, you can say X and Y. Now, if you take X, you can say majority of light rays converge. Okay, at Y you can say minimum amount of light rays are reached. Okay, so that is the explanation for the formation of these lines in the screen, white screen you get at the bottom, but the, the lines you get will depend on the, sorry, the shape of the lines you get will depend on the type of vibrator you use. Depending on the type of vibrator, it will be different. Okay, right. So that's something I wanted to explain. I hope this part is clear to you all. If you are required to produce curved waves from wave fronts, using parallel wave fronts. Show what kind of barrier you will be using with the aid of a, with the aid of a diagram. So they're asking, now you are supposed to produce curved waves, but you have to generate them using the parallel waves, right? So I know that that's a lot suddenly. So let's see what this is all about. So let me quickly do a recap on what happens now. If you use a point vibrator, if a point vibrator is used, when you use a point vibrator, so the vibrator will be at the center and then we will be getting wave fronts around that vibrator like this in perfect circles. So not perfect circles, unfortunately. Wait a minute, yeah. The wave fronts will be generated like this. You will see something like this on your screen. This is how it looks. Okay. Sorry. Right. This is how it will look. And uh, if bar vibrators are used. So when I say point vibrator, it will be like this, people there will be a gadget like this and there will be a sphere, then it starts vibrating like this in water. So in water, you'll get see waves like this. What is a bar vibrator? You'll have a gadget like this. Have a gadget like this, all right? So when you turn it on and when it starts vibrating, what happens? So it will vibrate now, people, all right? So what you notice is, what actually happens is, but it's not what you notice, what actually happens is waves will be created in this direction, okay? This is how the waves are going to be created. So let me draw that in 3D. Waves will be created like this. So all this time we were talking about wave fronts, wave fronts, wave fronts. So what are wave fronts? Wave fronts are the lines which connect the crests. So this is one wave front. This is another wave front. This is another wave front. Like that it goes. So when you draw the diagrams perfectly, you will get it perfectly, right? Like this. Wave front is the line which connects the 
crests of waves they will be parallel all right fine so you have to be absolutely sure about those so these lines i have drawn they are the wave fronts or lines connecting the lines connecting the crests okay guys so from top if you see top wave this is how it looked you you will just see some lines like this parallel lines like this so bright lines these blue color lines i'm drawing these are bright lines so these bright lines they actually represent the crests bright lines on the white screen they are the crests and exactly in the middle now this region is a dark region now relatively dark this middle part okay so there won't be any line but I'm just marking them so what are those lines then, those areas these areas are going to represent the troughs and therefore the distance between two lines bright lines what do we call that distance between two bright lines means distance between two crests distance between two crests so what is that that's actually the wavelength we know wavelength is the distance between two adjacent points which are the same face so therefore this can be wavelength so this is wavelength now this is wavelength similarly here this full circles these full circles they represent the crests whereas the middle region marking with these dots these middle regions are the troughs these middle regions are the troughs troughs hence here also the distance between two circles like this that will be actually lambda that's another important feature you have to know when it comes to ripple tank all right so this yeah the distance between lines bright lines we see on the screen that will be lambda and if the waves produce a circular waves then the gap between separation between two circles and this i should have drawn these circles at equal separations all right because wavelength doesn't change right let's continue uh, i'll come back to wavelengths after completing this right if you are required to produce curved wave fronts using parallel wave fronts show that what kind of barrier what kind of a barrier you will be using with the aid of a diagram okay before i go to that let me explain a little bit about reflection reflection in ripple tank all right reflection in ripple tank okay so let me make it quite simple for you from the basics so what is reflection there will be a barrier or a boundary so this is the barrier we are talking about barrier or you can also call it a boundary right even in small classes we have learned now when you draw a line like this perpendicular to that that line is actually our normal correct that is the normal the line perpendicular to that boundary and if there is a ray coming towards that like this okay so that we call it the incident ray all right and then it bounces off i'll use another color for that there's a purpose you'll understand it so this will be the reflected ray that is how we studied for light but the issue is this does not represent the wave really it is representing the direction of wave it is representing the direction of wave it is representing the direction of wave so what actually happens is the wave fronts will be 
approaching the boundary like this. So when you draw wave fronts, you will be drawing them per perpendicular to the ray like this. This is how the wave fronts will be. This is how the wave fronts will be. So you have to understand the difference between a wave or a ray and a wave front. So the maroon color lines I'm drawing with thicker lines, these are the wave fronts. Wave fronts. All right. And this thin line that is the ray. Ray represents the direction of motion of a wave. Okay. And a ray and a wave front will be always perpendicular to each other. What we see are the wave fronts. You will not be able to see the ray. It's an imaginary line we draw. But when it comes to laser or something, you will be able to see that ray. Because uh, you know laser light, it is uh, coherent and they are very concentrated. So they all travel at a, as a narrow beam. So you will be able to see that. But in other waves, you won't be able to see it. So these are the wave fronts which are incident on the barrier. And eventually, we will see the reflected waves like this. So the reflected waves, how do you draw? Perpendicular to the reflected ray, like this. But make sure that the gap between the waves, wave fronts is same. Because if you want to change the wavelength, you need to change the depth. Without changing the depth, you can't change the wavelength. Therefore, you will be able to observe reflection like this. Reflection like this. I mean, what we see is the wave fronts, right? Okay, right. So this is how reflection happens. Now, let's go back to the question. Still, we did not answer this question. What is this question about? We need to get curved wave fronts. So for that, what we need is we place a curved shape barrier like this. Now, let me draw that barrier. The barrier will look like this. This is how the barrier is going to look like. This is one way. Okay, sorry. Curved. So this is the barrier. Huh? The barrier we are talking about. If not, you can use a barrier like this too. You can use a barrier like this as well. Okay. Now let's uh, try to consider it like uh, a ray. So we know when rays approach. When rays approach, what, what do they do? They will approach like this and they will bounce back. If a ray comes like this, it will bounce off the surface like this. Wait, I'll draw. That's it. So it will not crowd it with a lot of lines. So these lines, you will not be able to see these lines. These are the rays, imaginary lines we draw. All right, right, fine. So this is the ray which is approaching the surface and then we will draw the rays which reflect off this surface like this. All right. So if I draw the wave fronts, we have we just learned wave fronts must be drawn perpendicular to the waves. So these are the wave fronts. So this is how this is what you see. The thicker lines are the lines you see. So they will approach the barrier like this. As they strike the barrier, what happens is you can see, I have to draw a perpendicular line to this. I'll just draw and show you with the blue color. Huh? For only for one I'll draw. Now I'll, I have to draw a perpendicular line to this. I have to draw a perpe perpendicular line for this. I have to draw a pe perpendicular Now here. It comes and bounces off the same surface. So I have to draw a perpendicular line like this, like this, and like this. So likewise, there'll be, we can draw a lot of rays and as they all reflect off the surface, what you see is, what you get is wave fronts reflecting off the surface like this in curved shape. This is what you will see. Okay, well, I hope you guys understood this. What happens here is the maroon color thicker lines. So these lines, the maroon color uh, thick lines, they are actually the incident wave front. Okay. 
incident waves or wave fronts and the blue color lines we have drawn they are the reflected wave fronts so when you send parallel wave fronts towards a barrier like this the reflected wave fronts will be parallel to that barrier i mean parallel in the sense straight lines here then they will reflect off the surface like this and what will happen here so without the rays let's try to draw them let's say you are sending wave fronts like this using a bar vibrator therefore it will be sending parallel wave fronts like this towards the barrier okay the okay wave fronts will approach the barrier after that how will they reflect off the surface when they reflect off the surface they will be reflecting parallel to the barrier like this i hope you can understand this is how the waves will go so you will notice both you will notice both in the ripple tank it will be a mixture okay the these waves the maroon waves will be moving this way and the blue color waves will be moving this way so you will be able to see the propagation here also same blue color waves will be they will be they won't be blue color actually you will be able to see bright lines in the white screen all right fine so that's how reflection takes place so one way is this if your boundary or the barrier is straight it will be it will happen like this you can decide that based on rays if incident ray reflected you draw incident ray and reflected ray then you draw the wave fronts perpendicular to that he also same incident ray reflected rays so you draw the wave fronts perpendicular to that that's how you get the reflection part all right so i hope that's clear to everyone all right so let's move on to the next part okay two wave fronts with wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 were sent through two barriers with a small opening as shown below in the diagram plot the subsequent diffraction patterns of the wave front so now we are talking about diffraction now what is diffraction why does diffraction take place let's discuss about that little bit diffraction so waves they have the ability of carrying energy so when a wave approaches a barrier now you can see this part is closed the path is closed now so only a small area is open so what happens is these waves will be, approach the barrier and their energy must propagate to the other side but the propagation will be limited only through this opening therefore what happens is these waves will start spreading their energy because uh, they are you now this part is blocked so waves can't come to this part directly correct so the waves will come this way and their energies will energy will spread like this so let me illustrate something see if you can understand so how are the waves actually propagating now they have given you the lines so what they have given you are the wave fronts how are the actual waves going to look like crest trough crest trough crest trough crest trough crest trough crest trough crest this is how the wave will actually look so if i draw a wave in the middle like this it will go on like this go on like this and here these waves will start spreading like this same wavelength wavelength will not change let me draw another one very quickly right crest trough crest trough crest trough crest trough crest and then this wave will go and then it will spread like this this is what actually happens so that is that phenomenon is what we call diffraction for diffraction to happen significantly there is a very important condition the width of the opening must be smaller compared to the wavelength okay right so that's something important right so i hope you all understand i understood this right now uh, let me quickly revise that part also now like i said 
it's going to depend on the opening so when you have a very small opening like this let me quickly illustrate that okay let's think of two situations very small opening relatively larger opening like this so what's going to happen here imagine wave fronts approaching that since the wavelength compared to the openings width is bigger and we have draw everything at equal interval okay right same i'll draw here so here you can see the wavelength is smaller than the opening if not the opening is too large let's put it that way opening is too large so we are going to compare the lens here right so here look at the length this is our wavelength wait to oh, everything should be right lambda 1 lambda 1 lambda 1 here okay same lambda 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 okay but here the opening is very small you can see x1 but here the opening it's very large therefore here the waves will spread a lot therefore you'll get a lot of diffraction like this because the waves can spread a lot but here the spreading will be quite less so the wave will actually look like this it will be quite less like this so it won't bend much but here it will bend a lot so in our syllabus we don't have to find these angles and everything just knowing this would be enough here lambda is bigger than the gap with the gap of the opening here if you take lambda it's smaller than the gap of the opening it should be equal it should be as smaller as possible for us to observe diffraction to a greater extent but here if you see uh, the opening is much smaller compared to the wave now here you can see lambda 1 and this gap lambda 2 is much bigger than this gap so in both of these refraction sorry diffraction diffraction is going to take place but you have to be very careful i'll draw the next thing so here when you draw yeah you can bend it no problem because this opening size is smaller than the wavelength but you have to ensure that the gaps are same on either side that's something very important which gap is it i'm talking about the gap on left side and gap on right side the wavelength will not change because for water waves if you want to change the wavelength now you are not changing the vibrating source you are using the same vibrating so frequency is constant frequency doesn't change so if you want to change the wavelength on either side you need to change the speed the speed of water waves they depend on this equation v equals square root of gh where v is speed of water waves whereas h is the depth all right so we know v is equal to f lambda f is constant so if you want to change the lambda you need to change speed of wave all right so if you want to change the speed of wave you need to change the depth they have not mentioned anything about depth so since depth doesn't change on the right side the gap between the circular parts should be exactly we are invading this territory so i'll make it small sorry this gap these two gaps also should be lambda 1 without that it is incorrect you will not get full marks all right so you got to be careful there and here also we can here also we can expect diffraction to happen to a larger extent but remember again the gap look at the gap larger gap so here we have to draw larger gap sorry wave fronts with larger gap circular shaped wave fronts but with larger gaps like this so that's the difference between the questions here so this gap should be equal and it should be lambda 2 what's the reason two things we considered here the openings width is is much smaller compared to the wavelength so we will be able to observe diffraction but in each case 
the wavelength on either side must be same because depth on either side of the barrier is same. So I'll make a note here. That's the important thing we discuss. The gap between wave fronts on either side of the barrier must be same. Why is that? Because when depth is constant, wavelength is constant. When does, next question, when does diffraction take place to a greater extent? Explain your answer. So in the previous two cases, it will be in the second case because in the first case, the wave fronts were like this and the opening was, okay, small. But in the second case, you will be able to observe the wavelength was much bigger than the size of the opening. In both the cases, size of the opening was same. Okay, so we can say uh, diffraction will be more when wavelength is much higher compared to compared to the width of the opening. opening so that energy of the wave can spread more. So in both these cases, uh, the wavelength was bigger than the width of the opening, but sometimes in other questions, they might give you larger width like this, width of the opening like this compared to wavelength. Therefore, there you have to draw the wave like this. It won't refract much. It won't refract much. I mean, it won't diffract much like this, almost straight. That's it. Not curved. So here we know it has to be curved. There it won't be curved. And I think that would suffice. Let's move on, right? So we are done with diffraction. It's enough. Now let's move on to the refraction, refraction part. Okay. Now you have to understand this diagram carefully. This is the top weave. This is you are weaving it from above. Now let me explain you the side weave. Before the side weave, let's move on to that equation we discussed earlier. What is that? Speed of water waves. So talking about speed of water waves, it's given by this equation. V equals square root of GH, whereas H is the depth. So from this equation, G is gravitational acceleration. So there is a, it's a constant. So you can say when depth is high, speed is high. When the speed is high, since frequency is constant, now we have studied when a wave travels from one region to another region, frequency won't change. Okay. So since frequency is constant, when speed increases, what will happen eventually? Wavelength will increase. Wavelength will increase. So where do we start? When depth increases, eventually wavelength will increase. And you might have learned about this when you learned about tsunami waves. Now this is the shore and the sea goes like this. Okay. So this is the deeper region. This is the shallow region. This is shallow region. This is the deep region. Okay. So when it is, the depth is high, H is high. V is high, lambda is high. 
All right, and here, when the depth is less, velocity will be less, lambda will be less. And when lambda is high, amplitude will be low. Amplitude will be low. The reason is, when lambda is high, the wave is spread out. Therefore, the energy of the wave will be spread out, which will make the amplitude small. But here, when the wavelength is small, what's the problem? Energy will be concentrated to a confined space. Therefore, not a confined space, really a smaller space. Therefore, here, amplitude will be larger. So if you draw the actual wave, here the wave will be like this. It will have long wavelength, short amplitude. As you go to the show, the wavelength will reduce and the amplitude will gradually increase. And as you reach the show, this will happen. You can see wavelength is reducing, amplitude is increasing. So when tsunami waves reach the show, they are much disastrous, but they are not as disastrous as that in the deep waters. All right. So when tsunami is happening, if you are in deep waters, you won't be harmed. But if you're here, the damage will be catastrophic. All right. So you, we are going to use that concept here too. So base, this is the base. Right now, I said this is top view. Now, what is the side view? When you see from side, this one, on this top view, if you see it from side, the side view is people, that will be this. See if you can understand. Huh? This is the ripple tank. It will be like this. And wait, I'll just draw the tank like this for the time, for convenience. Okay. And the glass block is actually kept like this. Okay, right. So let me draw a very thin line, which will represent the mean line of water. When there is no wave created, this is the water level. This is the water level. I hope this is clear to you, right? And to continue, now you can see this region, the region in the left corner and the right corner here, you can see depth is high. Correct? Here we have higher depth. Here, this is the depth. Look at the depth, small depth. So depth is small here. Because this is a solid, therefore here depth is less. But here again, higher depth. Okay? So if the depth is high, according to the equation above, V will be high. If V is high, lambda is also high. Amplitude is less. And in the middle, when the depth is less, Speed of water wave is less, lambda is less, but amplitude is large. And here also, similar to the left cone, amplitude is less, right? So now you turn on the vibrator, what kind of wave can we expect to be produced here? Let me draw that and show you, see if you can agree with me on that, right? So on the left corner, we are going to have waves with lower amplitude and higher wavelength. So let's carefully separate the region so that we don't drop it right. This is how the wave is. Let's, let's say this is the wave. Okay. Now this region, we should consider two things. High amplitude, lower wavelength. Therefore, I'll mark my reference points much closer compared to what I did earlier, okay, like this. So relatively higher amplitude. This is how the waves will be produced, like, sorry. Okay, never mind, finish it off. And then again, this region, what is this region? Uh, deep water, so high wavelength, low amplitude, high wavelength, low amplitude. This is how the wave will look to you from the side. Now this and this are exactly the same. There's no big difference. All right. So what we are seeing is this is the side wave. Now what I have plotted here is the side wave. But what this is from the top wave, right? So from the top wave, you are seeing this part. These lines, these lines are 
this part. So the part where you say water. Now this is water, correct? This is water, and this is the glass slab. So we are observing above the glass slab. This one, okay? Water will not go through the glass, correct? Above the glass. This, this is given to us. Okay, so we are going to analyze that next. Okay, guys, this. Now let's say how refraction happens. But before I draw that, let me go back to the normal refraction of light because refraction of light is what's more convenient to us. Correct? Right. So let me explain something to you. See if you can understand. Right. So this is the interface. And this is the normal, correct? This is the normal, okay? Right. Let's say this is a denser medium. Um, let's say glass, all right? And this is air. I'm explaining refraction using refraction of light, but that can be related to any wave. Light is also a wave. Water waves are also waves, right? So we all know when a light ray travels from glass to air, it will refract away from normal. Okay, from normal. Like this. Alright. So this is the ray. This is what we call the ray. I explained that to you earlier. This is the ray, not the wave front. Alright, so it has refracted away from normal. Why is that? Now we know glass, it has refractive index in W here, in A. We call this denser medium as we call this rare medium or rare medium. So we have learned here, the speed of light will be low. Here the speed of light will be high. Why is that? I hope you can understand this. Uh, we know um, N equals COV. C is the speed of light through vacuum. So if N is high, V is less. If not, there is an equation for all the waves. We write it like this, uh, N1 over N2 equals V2 over V1 equals theta sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 and similarly lambda 2 over lambda 1. So this equation is like universal or common for the waves, this, all right. So when you come here, you will be able to understand now I have explained you, this is the ray, the blue color line, that is the ray, correct? This is ray. So if you want to be more precise, this is refracted ray, refracted ray, whereas this is incident ray. All right. Now let's draw the wave fronts. How do you draw the wave fronts? Nothing to panic. You have to draw lines perpendicular to this. So I'll start like this perpendicular to the ray. Ray is already drawn, so the wave fronts must be perpendicular like this. Sorry. Must be drawn at equal gaps until the interface. Now this part, it's important, crucial. That's why I'm drawing like this. Right. Okay, still not happy. These four enough. After that, people, on the other side, when you draw the wave fronts, this is how we have to draw. Wait, I'm not done. One minute. Like this at equal intervals. And then after that, what we do is, yeah, we draw lines like this, perpendicular to the ray, but from where you stopped at the interface, like this. You can see the lines are perpendicular to the ray, so like this. So look at the gap. Automatically, the gap has increased. This is how the other rays will refract, like this. This is what you will notice in the ripple tank. But we don't draw wave fronts like this. We draw just the ray in light lesson, we just draw the blue color line. We don't 
we don't draw the maroon color lines, but this is what actually happens, right? So you can see this is uh, lambda w wavelength in water here, wavelength in air. This is for light. So wherever speed is less, wavelength will be less. So here, we'll, let's come back to here. This region is deep region. So this region depth is high. So velocity is high. Therefore, wavelength is high. Inside glass, in this region, we know this region. I'm talking about this region, huh? there depth is less. Therefore, speed is less. Therefore, wavelength is less. So here we should draw small wavelengths. So how do you do that? What I do is normally you draw a reference ray. So the ray here is going to be perpendicular to the wave front. So it should be horizontal. Okay, fine. And then we need the normal. So how do you draw the normal? Normal must be drawn perpendicular like this. And then it's like uh, here wave speed is high. Here speed is less. It's like traveling from rare medium to denser medium. Do you understand? When, wherever the speed is high, it's rare medium. Wherever the speed is less, it's like dense medium. Therefore, the ray will refract. It's like refracting towards the normal. So the ray here, we should draw it like this, bending it towards the normal. All right. Now afterwards, how do we complete the diagram? We draw lines perpendicular to this, like this. Mm, yeah, something like that. So the rays you should, I mean, sorry, wave fronts you draw must be closer to each other compared to the wave fronts you, which are given outside this, like this. They'll be, they should be drawn parallelly, but at a smaller gap, like this. I hope you guys can understand this. This is like a light ray in air. Speed is high. But here, it's like light ray inside glass. Okay, speed will be less. Wavelength will also be less. This. Okay, you can see here. Here the crests are much further away. Here the crests are closer. That's what I have drawn from top wave. This is how. It's going to look and two things, two things. The way it bends, it's also important. The way it bends, it doesn't bend the other way. So it bends how oh, downwards, correct? Right. So let's see how we can observe this in a demonstration of this area. That is a deep region. Okay, this is a deeper region. This area is a deep region, deep, right? This area is a shallow region where a glass block is kept. So we are observing from top. We are observing from top. So what you see here is the top wave. We are observing the ripple tank from top. So you can see the waves are approaching the boundary. So this is the deep waters. This is the shallow waters. So let's see what's going to happen. So you can see it's in slow motion. Look at the way the waves are. Right. Let me stop it there. Right. This is a perfect demonstration in real time. So these are the wave fronts. You see, see? Uh, bright lines dark lines, bright lines, dark lines, bright lines, dark lines, right? Here also same, dark, bright, bright, dark, bright, dark, like that, okay? So in the deep region, if I mark, in the deep region, if I mark the wavelength, how should I be marking the wavelength? It should be like this, correct? This is our wavelength, see? This is the wavelength. 
lambda 1. But whereas in the shallow region, the wavelength is going to be this small portion. Line, length between what? The bright lines. So that is our lambda 2. Okay, so what I explained with the ray is this. Now, if you, these are wave fronts, but the wave fronts, if you draw the rays there, the ray is going to look like this. Right, let's start. If you have to draw the ray perpendicular to the wave fronts, so like this. See, the red color line I'm drawing, that is the ray. You don't see the ray, but you see the wave fronts. What you see is the wave fronts. So what you see here is an actual weave of a ripple tank, all right? And then the ray meets the interface. So at the interface, what do we do? We draw a normal. So I'll use a very thin black color line to draw the normal. It goes like this. This is our normal. And then what happens after that? After that, you can see the wave has refracted this way. The wave has refracted this way. Why? We discussed a few things. When the depth is high, so here this is a deep region. So when depth is high, speed is high. If the speed is high, lambda is high. And whereas in the shallow region, depth is less. So the speed of the wave will be less. Therefore, lambda will be less. So wherever the speed is high, we can think of that medium as the rare medium. It's like the rare medium. Whereas wherever the speed is less, if not wherever the wave travels at a slower speed, if not wave travels slower, that is considered to be the denser medium. But here the medium is water, water. Both are water, but this is deep water. This is shallow water. So we consider them as two different media. And we know when a ray or wave travels from denser medium, sorry, rare medium to denser medium, it will refract towards the normal. And that's what has happened here. All right, so let's remember like this. Deep region means rare medium. Shallow region is denser medium. So at deep region, the angle created to the normal will be larger. And in the shallow region, angle created to the normal will be less. I hope this is uh, clear, gave you a good idea about the perspectives. So in this case, waves were sent from deep region to shallow region. But there can be a question where they send the wave from shallow region to deep region. So it's just the matter of changing the arrow, reversibility of waves. So they can travel the other way also. So you've got to be careful there when you draw the waves. And you can see wherever we it stops, there only bends. See, finishing point bends. Finishing, finishing point bends like that. So just like we drew, this gives you the real view what's going on. So you have to be ready for any instance. Next question. If wave front creates an angle of 60 degrees with the glass slab and the angle of refraction of water above the glass slab is 17 degrees. Find the refractive index of water above the glass slab with respect to the water away from the glass. All right, so I hope you guys can understand what's going on here. So let's take the refractive index of this part as N1 and this part as N2, the refractive index. And by the angles and all those things, what they mention is the angle created by the ray with the normal, all right? So we know the normal is going to be like this. This is our normal, right? This is our normal. And the ray will be like this. So as you can see, they have given us magnitudes 60 and 17. So based on the values, 
you should be able to understand this is actually 60 this small angle is 70. so what are they asking the question find the refractive index of water above the glass slab with respect to the water away from glass slab this is the part which is crucial with respect to therefore what they are asking us to find is i'll read it again refractive index of water above the glass slab with respect to water away from glass slab now in light we have learned like this what is it um, if they ask you to find this refractive index of water with respect to glass so what do you do you write refractive index of water and you divide it by refractive index of glass so whoever is with respect to you write that down the other part comes up so here refractive index of water above the glass slab with respect to the water away from the glass slab therefore you have to find out n2 over n1 what is n2 over n1 so according to snell's law we all know uh, we can write n1 sin theta 1 equals n2 sin theta 2 so n1 is n1 okay n1 into sin 60 equals n2 into sin 17 what are we supposed to find n2 over n1 n2 over n1 is equal to sin 60 divided by sin 17 so that is that will be n2 over n1 we all know sin 60 is root 3 by 2 is it root 3 by 2 so i can say yeah root 3 over 2 over n1 is uh, sorry sin 17 it's given as 0 0.3 so this is the answer is going to be uh, root 3 over 0 0.6 now for root 3 we can say 1.732 divided by 0 0.6 so it is 17.32 divided by 6 so that will be 2.88 something close to that i'm, I'm dividing 17.32 by 6 2.88 or 2.9 some somewhere around there the last part if the separation between two wave fronts it has to be tw two wave fronts in water which is away from the glass slab is two centimeters find the separation between the wave fronts in the water over the glass slab so it was like this now the glass slab this is the glass slab so above the glass slab it is shallow and we took it as n2 i think n2 and here we took it as n1 and we just found out n2 over n1 is actually 2.88 that is the ratio so here they are saying the gap between the wave fronts that is two centimeters we have given this as two centimeters now one thing we are absolutely sure you should be absolutely sure is that now here the wave fronts were like this, you know. If I draw the wave fronts here, they were like this, closer to each other, much closer like this. Therefore, now we have a new wavelength. We will take it as lambda two. This is lambda one. All right. Now lambda two is going to be a small value than lambda one for sure. So if you have got a answer greater than two, that's definitely incorrect. So it has to be a smaller value. So how do you find that answer? For that we go back to the equation we were discussing that's this equation guys so if you can remember this it's better this is their new syllabus you can apply this for all the waves in when they undergo refraction n1 over n2 is equal to sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 v2 over v1 that is equal to lambda 2 over lambda 1 you can consider an equation like this now if you want, I can explain this quickly. Now we know from Snell's law, we know n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So from there, you see n1 over n2 equals sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. 
sin theta 1 right and in addition to that we know c is equal to right sorry n equals cv so c is equal to nv where c is a constant speed of light through vacuum so therefore we can say n1 v1 equals n2 v2 so m1 over n2 there that is actually v2 over v1 and v2 over v1 can be written as f lambda 2 over f lambda 1 why because v is equal to f lambda and f is constant in both the media right so we get another equation n1 over n2 equals lambda 2 over lambda 1 so this is one combination this is another combination and this is another combination all three are combined to get this answer all right so we know n1 over n2 is in fact 1 over 2.88 equals lambda 2 we have to find out divided by lambda 1 is 2 centimeters 2 2 centi i'll just put centimeters to avoid confusions now we here a refractive index so it doesn't have a unit so this goes up therefore lambda 2 is going to be equal to 2 over 2.88 so you can just simplify okay 1 over 1.44 can simplify that and get the answer so how do you do that 100 over 144 that is 50 over no 25 over 56 0. Point, sorry 46 no 46 36 36 25 over 36 almost 0 0.7 i'm getting almost 0 0.7 0 0.68 centimeter something like that somewhere close to that 0 0.7 would be a best answer i'm sorry somewhere on this yeah 0 0.69 0 0.69 centimeters good i think this question is a complete package except for one part that is interference is missing here we discussed about reflect reflection refraction diffraction but interference is missing in this question we can discuss about a little bit about interference too but i think uh, regardless of that we have covered a lot here including this equation next we are going to discuss how interference is uh, observed in ripple tank all right so interference is the topic we are going to speak about now when it comes to interference we know there can be constructive interference destructive interference so how do we notice that right now this red color dot and the blue color dot they are two point vibrators in the ripple tank all right so when there are point vibrators now you turn on now there is no wave because the vibrators are off once you turn on the vibrator then around them waves will be produced like this right so then those waves will overlap like this so as those waves overlap like this interference will take place i hope you can understand i have used different colors so that you will it will be evident to you right and what we have drawn here are the circular wave fronts so these are the circular wave fronts so the wave fronts they actually represent who they actually represent the crests so these are crests these lines and on the other hand these lines they are also crests right moving on I have used these broken lines in between to indicate the troughs, the darker regions. So these are the brighter regions you will see on the white screen and these broken lines you see are the dark regions. Therefore, those broken lines you see on either side, 
they represent the tropes. I hope this is clear. Tropes. Here the broken lines. The circles indicated in broken lines. They are the tropes. All right. Fine. Now let's consider two things. So let's start. I'll start with green color. So notice these points. I'm going to use green color spots. This is one point, this point, these points are identical. You can see, right? Complete blue line and complete red lines, they are coinciding. Complete blue lines and complete red lines. I'm marking them in blue color, like this. On the other side also, you can mark them. Complete blue lines interfere, okay, sorry, overlapping complete red lines here. You can see there are a lot, there's a lot. So what is the meaning of this? green color points. What is the meaning of these green color points? A full line, full lines, I mean, not the broken lines, full lines are overlapping. I hope you can see the green spots I'm drawing. These are the green spots I'm talking about, huh? these things, right? So these green spots, they, rep they represent constructive interference because two tropes are interfering. So this is actually constructive. When they overlap, they're gonna do this constructive, all right? And then let's mark using uh, black color dots. The broken lines, are the broken lines overlapping? Yes, you can see here, see? The broken lines are overlapping. Where else can you see? Okay, I have only one such instance. If we, we, we can draw, more lines. So when you draw more broken lines, then there will be more, what do you call that? Uh, inter oh, sorry, overlapping. Now, for example, if I continue this, you can see broken lines. We can have broken lines here like this. So see, they are overlapping. The overlapping is taking place. So let me mark those points again in black. This is another point. This is another point. This is another point. Likewise, you can identify these points. All right. So the black color dot that also represents constructive interference. Why a trove and a trove, same face, they're interfering. So this is going to happen. So this is also actually constructive. They will ask you to identify points which represent constructive interference. So you should be able to identify this point. So the points which are marked are marked in black dot and green dot. Right, let's move on to the other part. I'll use orange or rather a darker yellow for these regions. I'll draw, okay, dots right. Look, what about this? What's happening here? Blue complete line is overlapping with red broken line blue complete line is overlapping with red broken line blue red there there's a lot you can draw lots and lots of points but i'm just uh, yeah the dark yellow and then these are the other points so what are those points let's try to describe those points the points which i used in orange so there are blue complete line and red broken line. Therefore, from left, the trove and from right, crest are overlapping. So that is going to be destructive. Those points represent destructive interference. Similarly, on the other hand, now what color can I choose? Um, I use uh, green. No, not green. I already use green. So let's go with something Okay, pink, less bright, okay. Something less bright, okay, brown, something brownish. So you can see this. <clears throat> you can do it on your own. It's not rocket science. Now what am I identifying here? 
I am identifying the red complete lines and blue broken lines. Red complete lines, blue broken lines. These are the points. Red complete lines and blue broken sorry blue broken lines. So what does that really represent? That actually represents okay. Red complete lines. They are from the left. They are getting the crest, and from the right, we are getting the trough. Again, that is also that also belongs to what destructive category. This is how you indicate the interference. You know, so this will be you will be able to observe this in a ripple tank, and in questions, what they do is. they will give you a diagram like this and they will give you random points here and there and then from those points they will ask you which points are constructive interference and which points are destructive interference all right so if they give you complete lines that would probably represent the crests normally we will they don't give the troughs but here we need the troughs to get a better understanding so for troughs they will give you broken lines all right so i hope this is clear to everyone so with this we have covered all four properties which can be observed or analyzed in a ripple tank except for polarization reflection refraction diffraction and interference all these four properties can be observed in a ripple tank